All right, in this video, we're going to talk about purine catabolism. I'm going to go through the two stages of it. I think it's a very interesting pathway. Um, so the two purines that we're going to start with from this catabolic pathway are going to be GMP, shown on the left of that figure, and AMP. All right, so let's start with, uh, say, AMP first on the right. So I'm not going to go into all the little details, but let's just briefly talk about it. So AMP is going to be... Uh, its phosphate is going to be hydrolyzed off by a nucleotidase, and that's going to give adenosine. Now, a really important enzyme here that actually has some implications is adenosine deaminase. What adenosine deaminase does is it takes the, uh, the amine that's on one of the rings of, of adenosine, or at least the adenine part of it, and it deaminates it to a carbonyl, and that's going to give you inosine. Okay? Inosine, by the way, is essentially an inosinate from purine synthesis minus the phosphate. So, in other words, if you take the phosphate off of IMP, that is inosine, all right? Adenosine deaminase, it turns out, can be deficient in some people, and that's going to cause a horrible immune disease, okay? Um, and we'll talk about that in another video. That's more of a medical application. But suffice it to say, adenosine deaminase can be deficient, and it can cause a very, very debilitating immune system problem, Okay. However, inosine will have its ribose removed by a nucleosidase. See, the ribose comes off, and that's going to give this molecule right here, which is called hypoxanthine. Hypoxanthine, this is just the nitrogenous base. And it turns out that hypoxanthine is going to react with an enzyme called xanthine oxidase, which also has some other implications, particularly in nutrition, because it's a source of free radicals. Notice the product of xanthine oxidase is hydrogen peroxide, which is not itself a free radical, but it is a pro-radical, meaning very easily, particularly in the presence of metals, it can be turned into radicals. So it has some implications in nutrition that we will go over in future videos. Suffice to say, xanthine oxidase converts hypoxanthine into xanthine. Now, that is where it converges with GMP catabolism, so now we are going to go to GMP, and then we'll continue from there. GMP is going to react first with a nucleotidase, because that's going to hydrolyze off the phosphate, giving guanosine. And now the guanosine will have its ribose removed by a nucleotidase, or excuse me, a nucleosidase, excuse me. Nucleosidase will remove the ribose from guanosine, giving guanine. And now, in a similar reaction to adenosine deaminase, we have guanine deaminase. And it turns out guanine deaminase will deaminate particularly this right here, this amine, and replace it with a carbonyl. Now, the carbonyl is not shown here. It's in the enol form, but it can be a carbonyl if it wants to be, okay, depending on the environment. So the point is it takes the nitrogen and converts it to an oxygen. That's done by guanine deaminase, and we get pneumonia off of that. Now the point is guanine deaminase converts guanine to xanthine, and it turns out xanthine is the convergence point between GMP and AMP catabolism. All right. Now xanthine oxidase is going to react with an enzyme that it's named for, xanthine oxidase, to give uric acid. Okay. And again, just to, just to uh, reiterate, Xanthine oxidase plays a major role in nutrition, particularly because it produces hydrogen peroxide, which is a pro-radical. Okay, it can form free radicals if given the right environment. Okay, now uric acid, which we often say interchangeably with urate, um, if you see if you hear the term uric acid or urate, they basically refer to the same thing, except one it has a they differ by a proton. Okay, so they're basically the same thing for all intents and purposes, okay? What's important about uric acid or urate is urate cannot be metabolized any further in humans, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna have an entire video on uric acid, but suffice to say, uric acid cannot be metabolized further in humans. And depending on your status of diet, that can lead to some really interesting things like gout, and that's what we're gonna have the other video on, okay? Now, Depends on what organism you are as to how you excrete ammonia, because the purpose of nucleotide catabolism is how you're excreting them. Okay, it's a way to excrete nitrogen if you have excess of it. Okay, but depending on which organism you are, you excrete the nitrogen differently. If you're a primate, such as us, we excrete ours as uric acid, which makes sense because I mentioned we can't metabolize uric acid any further. So we're going to excrete it as uric acid. And it turns out there's some other organisms that do this as well. 
Now there's an enzyme called urate oxidase, and this can convert um, uric acid to allantoin. Okay, allantoin is just a it's just a metabolite of uric acid, and some vertebrates are going to excrete allantoin. Now I want to make a note here because depending on what uh, source you're looking at, urate oxidase can do one of two things. It can either directly, depending on the organism which means depending on the type of enzyme, it can convert urate directly to allantoin. In some organisms, the urate oxidase will simply hydroxylate urate to make something called hydroxyisourate, and then another enzyme, hydroxyisourate hydrolase or hydroxyisourate decarboxylase, will then take hydroxyisourate and convert it to allantoin. Okay, but the point is you're gonna get allantoin, all right? Allantoin is gonna react with allantoinase to make allantoate. And it turns out that some fishes, teleost fishes, are going to excrete allantoate. And then another enzyme, allantoicase, is going to hydrolyze that into urea. And it turns out the other product of that is glyoxylate, and the urea is what's excreted by amphibians and cartilaginous fishes, things like sharks and so on and so forth. Another enzyme called urease can break down urea into ammonia and also carbon dioxide, and ammonia will be the type of uh, nitrogen from nucleic acids that's excreted by, by marine invertebrates. Okay, so this is just kind of a cool figure telling, depending on what organism you are, how you excrete the nitrogen from catabolized purines. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, but just understand that when we're talking about humans, we do not go any further than uric acid. And that has to do with the fact that the enzyme urate oxidase in humans, we actually have a gene for it. And the question is, if we have a gene for urate oxidase, why don't we make the protein? Well, it turns out that in some cases, in many different organisms, a gene is what we call transcriptionally inactive. We don't make the mRNA for that gene, and therefore we don't make the protein. So we don't make urate oxidase for some reason. It's kept inactive, all right? So as a result of that, we can't go any further. So this is how we excrete it. And that's mainly what we're concerned with because in the next video, we're gonna go over uric acid and urate, all right? So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.